Let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness to us. Help us to listen to your voice, understand your will, to carry it out in all things. May all that we say and do be to your glory. We entrust this time to you through our mother as we say, Hail Mary. Holy grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, a quick show of hands. Uh, next Tuesday was Thanksgiving week. Do you want to take a break that next week or keep meeting? Break. Break? Yeah, I'm going to be on. You got a break. 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 Okay. So the next week, um, I'm not meeting on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. So article 42. Okay. Forty and forty one don't have much to say, but that was me. We basically said it last week, but finally you're away. <laughs> I just walk from the case, so I to say briefly what it tells us to take the pages to say. The Thomas Aquinas does suggest to land the farm from his office for Corpus Christi. I will take up his words here, to summarize what I just said in this part on the Blessed Sack. We'll stop the video. Which Christ has received, the memory of his past is renewed, the mind is filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory is given to us. May this prayer help us to reflect in our hearts and our lives the great of treasure, which is Christ the universe, and to receive him there that was perverted and devotion. And then very briefly, the bishop here quotes Thomas well, 24, 15. It says, There are three ways to make an order of communion. One is not a master verbally, that is the way it differs from Christ is given his hand off to us. Talk about this Mark 42, the Book of the Liturgy. To approach the Eucharist, what is the Eucharist? In communion? In communion? Yeah. With a contemptible lack of devotion. Or three to receive communion with the state of the world's sin. So to approach our Lord without carrying these there. In more sin, we try to change the mess for your own reasons. <laughs> now we're <on> for you. Some people see this for two years. We Yeah, energy though. I have to try to be careful not to skip ahead and mention things that are mentioned later on. Yeah, I was like, so, you got people here that don't easily get confused. <laughs> what I can't hear too old. See, so he, he goes to define the liturgy in our 43, so we'll wait to say that. So the second liturgy of the church <laughs> is the summit, which is the activity of the church is directed. At the same time as the thought which hold for how it flows. This is from the Second Council. In other words, the liturgy of the church is much the very priesthood of Jesus Christ. The most important thing the church does and can do. 
It is the great work within the Word of God glorifying the man or sacrifice. Within this celebration of the Holy Eucharist, the Mass, the High Point, the High Point, the Eucharist, the sort of some of the Christian monsters we saw above. Because of this, I think it's important that this point discuss just as it matters. The Church goes to the participation of the Eucharist and the celebration of the Holy Mass. I think we discussed already priests and sacrament. We discussed those sorts already. <coughs> Priesthood, sacrifice. We've already discussed that, correct? Right? Didn't I pass up here a sheet that had those terms on it? Yeah. Is that people looking to be confused? We'll cover this please. Let's look at a couple of terms here. Uh, the priesthood sacrifice, Lord, that we will look at next paragraph. Um, there one more that I'm going to look at. I think a lot of these concepts we've touched on earlier in the discussion. Let's just re remind ourselves what we're talking about. So let's look at the first priesthood. The priesthood of Christ. What is a priest? Between God and man. As a mediator, a priest does some of that. There's more of was he's the one thing that only a priest can do. Uh, uh, intercessor sacrifice. So a priest is always connected to sacrifice. A priest is someone chosen by God to represent a people and to offer sacrifice. The priest who means sacrifice. Christ became our priest. What? The last supper around crucifixion. Before that? So, before that, you're going to get closer to those. Uh, at conception. At conception. At conception. So, Christ became our priest of the incarnation. Before, in eternity, he, before he was man, he didn't be a priest. Because a priesthood means being one of us. It also means to offer sacrifice you, uh, implies a lower dignity than God. God can't offer sacrifice to yourself. Uh, and so Christ is in human nature is lower, even though he's both divine and man. He's, divine, he's God and man. As man, he's lower than God. And so in his human nature, he's able to offer sacrifice. He's able to offer the sacrifice to God. And so he begins his priesthood to sanctify man, to save mankind, to please God, to purify him. He was incarnate. And so he becomes our priest. <clears throat> what does Christ offer? What does Christ sacrifice? This is the cross on the last side. God was himself. Yes. So he's a priest of the incarnation because he's offering himself at that point. Now, an incarnation is offering this is his heart, his love, it's a spiritual sacrifice. That's what we call a full sacrifice until the, the cross and the last supper. That's what the sacrifice is complete and full of all the physical details. But even here, there's a physical sacrifice offering. His humanity, his humility, his, um, his love and adoration. Not just simply in an abstract way, but in a real way, he's offering himself to the Father continually when he's conceived. So, what is a sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's offered? I've never sent the offer, and that is offered by Tupac. <laughs> oh, it shows a part of the offer, represents 
very good at smoking. <laughs> 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 you get it, you have a quiz for you all. So a sacrifice is a gift of adoration for God. As part of this, has to be physical. Because we're a It's a real physical gift given to God. It's a gift of adoration. It's offered by a priest to make it soul. It represents the giver. And the people, in this case, so, so whatever it tries to become that, it's so his it's gift, it represents us. For example, if it weren't us, he's offering it, you wouldn't be our sacrifice. And it's changed and destroyed the sun. Take out of man's control and power to belong to God. Only given to God, but it is a real physical gift given to God. So the priest of Christ is something he does as a man. The sacrifice of the mass is the greatest expression, the greatest way our Lord lives out this priest. Right? His entire life, he was a priest. But the Mass, the sacrifice of the cross, the Last Supper, the Mass, all the same sacrifice. That's the greatest expression, the greatest way without that adoration, love for us all. So the Mass that we do every day, that we'll do tonight in a few hours, um, is the living out of the priest of Christ. Because who is offering the Mass? Really? Christ. Christ. Who does it through me, you use it for me, that's what I do. And who is being offered the Mass? Christ. And we join in. Right? We offer ourselves, we bring in our efforts, our love, our hearts, we join to that. But it's the preaching of Christ. Mm -hmm. Talking to Christ, it's being exercised the Mass. And that's something you ought to hold fast to of what's going on. It's adoration of God, um, then because of that, it takes, it then sanctifies and purifies and heals us. It's act of thanksgiving and act of supplication as well, praise. The adoration of God given by Christ the Prince. And that's basically the best, most perfect gift possible. The best, most perfect act of thanksgiving to God, and therefore it can do these things, sanctify and glorify God. And so we begin literature, discussion on literature, what literature is, with discussion on the Mass. Recognize that what's been happening in the Mass is adoration and sacrifice and Christ exercising his priesthood. It's not us getting together and singing some songs. So us getting together and listening to people talk at you. That was too, unfortunately. <laughs> What's happening is an exercise of Christ's own priesthood, which is the source and summit of our life of the church. Right? But what made what to be the church is, is to belong to Christ, the member of his law, who receives grace and union and love of Christ. Where does that come from? Where does every grace come from? From God and the but what what particular act did Christ do to win his grace? He dies on the cross. cross. So every grace comes from the cross. The Mass is the cross. And so this is why the Mass is the source and summit of our Christian life. This is why the Mass forms us as Christians, members of Christ's body. This is why when we go to Mass, it's the highest expression of our unity in the cross. I think we'll go on over that in a minute, so we'll pause there. Uh, so, let's look at very, very briefly, and again, yeah, I think we also just talk about these, but it's important to recognize these words there. I think we use them in a variety of ways, and because of that, when it comes to these documents, when it comes to talk about the church, sometimes we don't grasp the significance of these words. So what is the book? Praise? Okay, good. Which is what? <laughs> she said honor. 
Honor? Okay. We can just watch. Oh, okay. Let's see though. We can just watch. Is it more or partly the fulfillment of his work? It is. So these two things are Christ's mission, why he was sent, to do these two things, to glorify God and to sanctify his people. But what is this? We threw out these words, and, they, and I don't know what they are, but what are they? Recognition of what we stand for, to do except our Yes, good, good. So it's recognizing who God is <laughs> and expressing it. Yeah. Recognizing who God is and expressing it. It's the expression of God's greatness. So it's expressing the greatness of God, which is way of adoration and friendship of God. Um, Because in heaven, which is the goal of our lives, we're going to be friends united to God, and friends of the law. Not in the barry sense, but in a deepest, profound sense, mm-hmm. deep sentence. The friendship of God is unique to that human friendship. A human friendship involves, so friendship is most basic. It's two people wanting what's good for the other person. Mutually wanting the good of the other. For a human being, it's easy because we need lots of things. There's lots of things we need. So you can look at me, I can look at you, and say, oh boy, howdy, they need a lot. <laughs> and so the friendship for each other, I can want to work for those things that are good for you, vice versa. But with God, we cannot want things for you. You can't look at God and say, man, boy, howdy, God needs, you know, anything. God really needs this. God really needs, God needs nothing from me. And so friendship with God is not me looking at God and saying, God needs these things. But looking at God and saying, how great God is, I rejoice that he is great. <laughs> how good God is, and I rejoice that he is great. That's I would like to be friends with this before. Can we also think about the fact that we also, uh, because can we also love God? Yes. As something we give to him? We must love God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Certainly, that is part of it. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, no, that's not a question at all. Um, the. the, the Yes. So obviously part of the friendship is love. But what is love? So it's, it's a love to love someone so they're good. Yes. Which goes back to friendship. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to love God, you can't want one, 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 one thing for him. Right. And so the death to love God and rage and glory is to rejoice in who he is. So we love God, um, not just emotionally, but that probably involved too. But the heart and the soul and the will has to love God. So you want what God wants, you understand what God is, and you rejoice. You do His will and you follow. Good. What was that? No, 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 A lot of these, these terms are not different in God or the thing, that, but we, we parse them out to different nuts. So the different way to understand. Right? So, so, so God is good and wise and truth and beauty and all those things, right? But then he has no parts. So with God, we're all the same thing. I just lost you, sorry. <laughs> okay. I saw the face. We should try it again. We say the things they didn't want. 
Um, because our brains are small, and God is we can only see a bit of God in so, so sometimes to describe God is his greatness, we only look at a piece of the time. But that one piece is talking about God and branch off to everything who is. Because God is so united and simple, it's not you can't take a piece of him off and break, break it off because he's infinite. Uh, and so when it comes to God, everything is everything. Which we say it again, that, that we do it again. Uh, when, it comes, when it comes to God, when it comes to God, we will often use human words and human terms and, and put God to pile to the pieces, which doesn't exist in real life. And, and we have to, why don't we get anything? So we have to be able to say, God is good, and God is truth, and God is beauty, but God is not reasonable to divide into pieces. Human beings might be. This much is good, this much is, is true, this much is not good or truthful. But when it comes to God, yes, when it comes to God, God is not reasonable to piles. But for us to talk about Him and express and think about Him, we have to kind of shove things into piles. But in reality, it's not. Because God, God is it just is so much grander and bigger and greater than we can express. But so what our human words we have to put them in a box. Putting them in a box. And we have to, otherwise we can't get it. Yeah. This is the box. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one reason why God became man. Was so we could talk to him and, and grasp him and see him and touch him and hold him and receive him. Because as God, we can't imagine. We can't touch them or see them or grasp them or come to them. So he comes down to us. You know, it's like a wise man talking baby talk. So that's the definition of frustration. Which one? That's frustrating. Oh, understand God? Understand God? Yeah. <laughs> and going back to Debbie's point, the time is hard to grasp more than one. Hopefully, the heart grasps more than mine. <laughs> even human beings, like the friends and the family and the spouses, are often the hard grasp more than mine. You look at your child and go, Why? I can't do it all. I love you guys, but I don't catch you. Trust. Trust. Yeah. Good. Sanctification. Salvation is simply the process of a man becoming by God, holy. So God became man to glorify his fall. He got the French to God, not God, and to save us. In the end, these are actually the, the two sides of the same thing. Because if we're saved, we will glorify God. If, if we're saved, we're going to love God and pray. The friends who want to be saved. So these are really the, really the same thing. This is the same, uh, the result of the same thing. So when God became man, the mission of Christ, the reason why Christ was sent, the glory to God, and to save man. And when we're saved, the greater we are, the happier we are, the God we are, the more God is giving us. God has chosen to find his glory and your greatness, your happiness, and your salvation. He could have found it other ways. But he wants to find it, you becoming great. He wants to find it, you becoming happy for eternity. That's what God finds his glory. Which is a pretty awesome thought. Cool. Questions? Let's watch Article 43. We'll pop another day. Okay, I'm trying to ask a question. Sure. Do we distinguish between salvation, justification, and redemption? 
you can. Um, So the problem with the English language is sometimes we use words interchangeably, and sometimes we don't. These three words can be used interchangeably. They can also be very different things. So interchangeably, it's, I mean, they all basically mean going to heaven and being done. They both basically. They're because interchangeable. But salvation is different than redemption. Um, to be saved is different than, than to be redeemed. Because redeemed refers to having fallen into sin. So that there is in this word the notion of there was a sin involved and you were forgiven and healed of that sin. So the angels have all been saved. All, all the angels will receive grace from God and brought to heaven. The angels will be brought to heaven through grace, right? But the angels were redeemed. The angels never sinned. So Michael would been saved, Michael was not redeemed. The Virgin Mary was saved by Jesus Christ. Was the Virgin Mary redeemed? So, no. But isn't like all the evil is the angels that fell from heaven that are here? Like they sinned because they felt they fell. But they were saved or redeemed? The same as this person saved or redeemed? No, right? Because they didn't reject God entirely. Yeah. So Michael the archangel, he's he's saved, yeah. but he's not redeemed. And the angels can't be. Correct. Because the way the angels are, are, are made, they, the, angel, the angel's will and choice is so strong that the one choice, they're set for mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's because they're so much greater than we are um, that, that, that their, one, their one choice is determined. Um, because for us, part of what makes our choices different is we have a body and a soul, a soul intellect. We have to kind of cross reason things, and so it, it, we can choose things living in time again and again and again, or against things again. The angels can. The angels make one choice for us. And so the, the, the fallen angels, they made their one choice, and that's it forever. The good angels make one choice, and that's it forever. And, and so the our many yeses make up for the smallness of our yes. There's one yes is as big so it's eternal. We can say yes a million, million times. The angels can do that. Um, and, and so there is beauty in both sides. But so when we're, the angels are all saved, Mary is saved, but tonight we'll be able to rock the other good angels in poverty. Justification simply means to be made just. And so it could be that. But it also it often refers to the process. <coughs> so if you find someone distinguishing this, you would say this is the end. This is the goal you're in heaven. This is the process of getting it. So that's often how you find the distinguish. It is you're justified it's this process of growing in grace, and leaving behind sin becoming old. So they're all interrelated, and they can be used interchangeably. But you will find that justification used as this process of being made just is going on with the whole of your life, with the confession, being baptized, working this life. Justification process that they should be the, the end. From my exposure, it's been that justification is surrounding how we can approach that. But that is how we are justified in being able to 
come close to him versus since we're just here. Right. Um, so, so, so this is a, a so come close to God it is a process thing, right? So coming, coming close to God isn't a one-time thing you're done, right? We have heard it is the, the whole argument of justification versus works. But I think even there, a justification of grace, I, I don't think, unless I'm mistaken, I, I don't think the process of legal justification by faith alone is saying that, that there's no growth. It's, it's, not, it's not a process of becoming holier. And that as you come close to God, holier you are. So I, I believe that that would stop getting wrong. Uh, so I know you've had experience with this personally. But the Protestants who believe justification by faith alone right. would recognize the Greek moments. I would recognize that, that there is a process of justification. Am I wrong about that? No. Don't have enough information. <laughs> um, so, I mean, and again, one of those things where it again, it's different contexts. And I, I know people who distinguish justification from, from other kinds of, you know, and. Part of the discussion when it comes to uh, the Protestant talk of the Catholic is figuring out as defines the terms. Um, there's a story Caesar Lewis tells where he says he argued with somebody for, for hours whether God was personal. Um, because by personal, Caesar Lewis meant having an intellect and a free will, loving, loving, thinking. Other guy meant having a body. So by personal, he meant human person having a body. And so they had this long argument, this stuff went back and forth, you know, because his friend was saying God had a body. He was saying God God has a free will and he loved what he thinks. So they're already over with this whole thing, so they're the word bigger. Uh, and so yes, even justification will have several different nuances and meanings. Um, there's other words on my mind right now. Um, but that sometimes you distinguish between the two cases as well. So. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Keep hiding this from myself. Put it down and find it. It doesn't have the. <laughs> Maybe that will. Article 43. Before we can do this, discuss participation in the Mass, celebrating Mass, we must first discuss a simple question. What is the liturgy? In the tightest of terms, liturgy of the Church is nothing less than the passion and death of Reverend Jesus Christ. Made present in the sacraments as a real act of the church. Isn't that clear? <clears throat> Do we have that in English? <laughs> <laughs> Let me. No, no, I'm trying to see the pattern. I want to repeat these so they're wrong. This was the same weather repeats. That that you guys that pulls the other of the thing we're gonna get. Okay. <laughs> so this is the passion and the death or the rapture. Present in the sacraments. And the trivial action. It's repeating the same words. Out, that's my definition of that one. Let's go back a little bit here and let's, let's break this down in English. As you said, it. so liturgy comes as an, as, an, as an ancient Greek concept. Greek concept, idea, word. 
Um, liturgy is the public action of the people. The public duty of the people to God, or in the case of the Greeks, to the gods. And so liturgy was the way they expressed the duty you had as, as a good Greek citizen to honoring and serving the gods. Sacrifice, to praise them, to pray to them, that's it. It's a public duty because to the Greeks and the Romans later on, many of the peoples, what was the foundation of their society? It would have been the gods. Right? The gods they needed the protection of the gods, they needed the help of the gods. And the Greeks and the Romans, there was the symbiotic relationship between the gods and men. Right? And so for the Greeks and the Romans, you went to the gods and you fed them a bowl, and they enjoyed it very much. In return, they blessed them. So you, you paid them something that they paid you back. You gave them you know, praise, or water, or your bull, or your sheep, or your, your child, depending on time place. In return, they blessed you with various gifts and made your life happy. And so to do these things was a public duty, not just a private one, but it's something they do as a good citizen and did in the community. If you look at the ancient Greek temples, one of the big differences between the Greek temples, this is a Greek chapel. <laughs> <laughs> The ancient Greek temples, all the views on the outside. Because the people gathered on the outside. The sacrifice took place on the steps out here. This is where the altar of sacrifice in the temple. The altar of sacrifice where the animals slaughtered. And the priests lived inside. But everything happened on the outside. People gathered on the outside to do their liturgy. It's public duties that come on sort of feast days, sort of holidays, to offer the sheep and the goats, or their children, or their wheat, whatever it might be. And there was a quid pro quo. You scratch the back of the gods, the gods will scratch your back. In trying to describe the relationship between God and man, the true God and your sacrifice. The ancient church fathers took this term and this word and chained the meaning. It still is the public duty of the people. But now the public duty of the people is the Christians. And the duty is to honor, love, and glorify God, which takes place in the cross. So we're made of people by Christ. And we love and honor God through us. So liturgy refers to all of those things we do to love God, to honor Him, to glorify God, and to save man. Which is the reason that Christ came. These two things are. The same thing from different points of view, for us and for God. And so we have this public duty to share us, to do this to work with us. So all the things, it's every part of, part of our life, every part of our Christian life, comes from Christ and goes back to God for Christ. All the ways in which God is glorified and man is saved is the church. This public duty, this public office of mankind. So, this includes prayer. Well, it includes, first of all, the Mass. Because this is the sacrifice of Christ. This is the highest and first respect of it includes the other sacraments. First of all, communion. All other sacraments. 
Because when we're baptized, it's a public thing or a private thing. Public. It affects everyone. When you go to confession, that private or public? A little bit of both. Uh, so it's like confession. So it's, it often is happy in private, but there are public effects. There are public effects. Public things happen. So the people pray for each other. You start, you know, part of the effect of it is either you are restored back into the body of the church. Um, and then you go to heaven, and hopefully you'll be a saint, help the church as well. Um, and so the effects are public, even if it may be private. Right? So you can even have a private mass in one sense. So I go to my room tonight and lock the door and came back to myself. Ah, uh-huh. right. just throw a mask. I could. I thought you had that one other person nope. with you. Not anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but that was a discipline uh, that, that was removed. It was a discipline. And it was disciplined because of the, of the fact that it is always a public act. Um, but it happened in private. I'm traveling, or I'm just in the meeting tonight, locking the doors. <laughs> Have you ever said mass and then we showed up here? Not Have here. You just by yourself? Not here, but but I was so sad when I was in Gap. I had applied a private mass, so I went to the chapel, so mass and all. No, no one was there because there was no one was announced. Um, so this church was shut down because of COVID. COVID. And had a last so I had a plan last night. It wasn't because no one showed up. It was because I locked the doors out of the drink. Think people would have showed up. <laughs> never again. Never again. Um, but, but there's never been a time here where I walk for a mass and no one's come. So I at least one person. Uh, every single day. I uh, hopefully many people so. but, but even even in those cases of where, where I'm by myself and traveling, uh, I say a mass quietly by myself quietly somewhere, is it really private? No, the angels are there, the saints are there, the ladies there, it's offered for the world, but that's still it still is a public action, even though it's a private thing. So all the sacraments have public effects and affect the entire world. And they're, they're offered the glory of God and the salvation of man and man. Public prayer is liturgical, especially the, the divine office. So when we pray in a public way, especially the ones that are commissioned by the church, ordered by the church, glorify God, that is an act of liturgy. It's the truth, though, because it comes, the grace is won by Christ, comes from Christ, and goes back to glorify God and to save mankind. So, liturgy refers to all the actions. Um, one big difference in the Catholic Church and in the Greek temples was where the Lord's sacrifice took place. On the inside. Where do you sit? On the inside. Because what are you? Your priest prophet came to baptism. If you go so we'll back to the temple in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem there were three gates. And more room for drugs. <laughs> three courts. You had, first of all, the Holy of Holies, where there was the Ark of the Covenant, and then there was the curtain drawn across that, and only the high priest went down there once a year. Around that was the court of the priests. And this is where most sacrifices took place. This is where Zachariah was, the altar of incense, when the angel Gabriel came and said he was going to be a birth to you know, you're going to be pregnant for all that. And around that, you had the court of, of the people. So there was this division. There was, but the, now, if this were the temple, there's still three gates, 
So you had the outer gate here, the core of the priests, and the the holy holds. You all sit in the court of the priests. The name of the church is the court of the priests. The, the sanctuary of the holy holies that are the cover that places them God is. But all of these things are the church. They're all involved in the public ways. Again, I don't like this definition because you're defining it by itself, which doesn't really look anyway. You can't define a word by itself. But the public action we do as Christians, as being the priests of Christ, walk with Christ, is we take the grace He won, we take His life, we take the grace there, His love for God, and we use that to glorify God in the sacraments, the Mass, and in public prayer. This is our duty as the followers of Christ. Because our job is to glorify God and what we're to say. First of all, ourselves. But that other people as well. So, so that they're sound like the thought or just the question. <clears throat> Liturgy then means all of us. Now often when we speak of liturgy, we simply mean the mass, this is the highest expression of liturgy. It involves all these things. The sacraments are also the church. Communion is the church. The office is liturgy. What's that? I see why it's in its own definition. Because they're talking about the noun and the verb. Yeah, but. That's why. Because they would have to do it. Because now it's the action and the Any questions on this? I just wanted to uh, mention about the my office for liturgy, the hours. Yes. Well, tomorrow, um, November the 15th, I'll commemorate the Rode of Ontario and Gospel of Food, which is a good article. Yes. Just give you a hint. You hear a lot of things. Yeah. I think my my office has a different reason than that one does. Oh. Because that is the old traditional. <laughs> not really sorry about it. I'm just not sure that I'm, I'm going to get to it. Oh, this is 1975. Oh, oh that's that's the uh, okay. That's just I thought I thought it was the old 62. Take it back. I thought it was the old 62. Yes, that was the important. Okay. So, <laughs> I got some Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do, um, let's see. Now, the liturgy of the Mass really can't be changed, right? At all? Details can be not the essence. So, for instance, could, could the Pope tomorrow say, you can read the Gospel of the Gospel of John? Yes. Could one decide to um, pray the, the Mass in Latin or to read the Post English? Yes. Could you have a different hymn set? Yes. Could you rather the Gospel read from the uh, Subhakatra of Buddha? No. <laughs> but you have the rubrics in red. Yes. You don't change that. No. No. Uh, because, because where did it come from? It's Christ's action, it's Christ's work, it's, it's Christ being glorified. And because Christ is the only way to get to heaven, if I tell you about what Christ does, it was not being Christ's action, is it doing this? No. So I do my own thing. And then I stop doing this anymore. And then I stop urging So if, if, I, if I stop doing what Christ does, it stops being Christ's action, and then it stops being salvation or a for God. So if tomorrow's you know, right after the Mass is a brilliant idea, instead of going to all hold hands and sing songs about the altar and say, Kumbaya, <laughs> we're going to share a meal together. Yeah, I and mean, that sort of things. Yes. Not right. It's not, it's not right. It, it's blasphemous. Yes, it is. It's sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very wicked. Yeah. So, 
Yes. So <laughs> but he's not going to do that tomorrow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. If you want to do it differently, in a different time, place, different group, place, find it. But no, you can't replace, substitute the liturgy for your own event. Because liturgy, um, it comes. As Catholics, it comes from Christ. Our liturgy comes from God. It's Christ's passion, Christ's death, and resurrection. And so to substitute that for anything else, whatever the right is, if we get rid of it, all these say it's very ugly. That's, that's another problem. But if it was beautiful, Right? It, 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 it could be Bach, you know, composition. It could, it could be the greatest part of all time. It could be a great poet or a poet. It still, it still is wicked and lost. We're trying to substitute any human art, any human action, any human activity for Christ. You're damning yourself. Because without Christ, there's no salvation. Without Christ, you nobody know, Without Christ, you know, there's no salvation. Is it replace Christ's action or human action, whatever it is? I mean, too often we have that happen, of course, because it replaces this very God so it's good stuff. Even if it were beautiful, it would be irrelevant because it's not that simple. And only this saves. Only this work is not only this. One more remark I'll make about this before we move on is that so if you go to the Greek temple, the inside is very quiet. The outside is when sacrifice place. Where is the greatest beauty in living the Catholic Church? Or should be the Catholic Church. <laughs> On the inside by the altar. So around around the tabernacle, around Christ's seat. Because here it's the God lives here, here is the priest who lives here. And so that's the difference between the Catholic temple and the Greek temple. Even though they some of the words are borrowed and then adapted. So we are Article 43, uh, right after number 28. So it, a liturgy, is our redemption from sin and our reconciliation of the fall and renewed every celebration. Because it's this. We're renewing our death from sin and going back to God and more life. It is even a foretaste of heavenly liturgy which celebrated mostly in Jerusalem, for which we journey as pilgrims. So liturgy So, so that offers the heavenly liturgy, the enjoyment of the ancient saints, heaven of God. Even before that, at the beginning of time, there was a heaven liturgy. Now, the means a little bit different, which is now going kind of deep in the mysteries of God, but the Trinity, the eternity, there is a love of friendship. Now, there has not been salvation of mankind in the Trinity, for the angels. The Trinity. But in the Trinity, there is the glory and the love of the friendship. There is the recognition of the greatness. And so even so God's own life. Is the greatest liturgic liturgy of all. And so when God became man, it was to bring us 
to share in this. To share in God's own life, so to rejoice with God and be with God for eternity. The angels in heaven rejoice and are happy because they share in God's own life. For us on earth, these three things help us get here. And so even now, this is a taste of drawing into the Trinitarian life. And so where worship begins is God's own life and God's own being. Where the liturgy begins is in God. And God became man and died on the cross to show us and help us live this out in a real way. In a human way, a physical way, in a way that brings us deep into the heart and the life of God. By grace, what we're being given is union with God and lots of life so we live with God for eternity. So is this my heart? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this an incredible act of love by God? And so when we talk about liturgy, we're talking about these things. The point of them is to bring us to God's own life. And so by doing this, what's happening in the Mass, the sacrifices, in the public prayer, is we're expressing in human language and human actions God's own being, God's own life, God's own reality. So going back to Beverly's point, that's why you can't change it. That's why you can make it your own thing. By the way, you can't decide they were going to be doing you know, something different to abortions. Because the point is this. And God is eternal, unchanged, and perfect. We're we'll being run into this, and Christ and his humanity shows us how to live the divine life in a human way. How we as human beings, in our weakness, our brokenness, even in our sinfulness, can live the divine life in the rock of holiness to share in this fine life in heaven as God's adopted sons and daughters. That's the truth. That's the truth. This is an incredible, incredible, astounding thing. And the Bible liturgy is never just simply human actions. Never is it, in the Greek says, human actions trying to be like God. Never is it even simply beautiful as that would be, imitate Christ. But it's us sharing in God's own mind, walking with God, living with God through Christ, death and resurrection. That it isn't it is a, a good act, but it's not quite the same thing as this, but it is a whole thing. Yeah. It is a whole thing. Yeah. Um, Good. Are we going to sit with that for a lifetime? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that. <laughs> Number 30, Article 43. This definition truly makes liturgy something more than that we do for our charger. It's not us saying we have a ministry. Instead, it's God working with us to keep on that we have. That's why it's important at all times to post liturgy the sense of reverence at all. But liturgy is not our attempt to please God. Rather, God Himself teaching us how to pray to Him, to glorify Him, and to worship. Not because God selfish and wants these things, but for the sake of our salvation, redemption, and our own life. To this end, and say, the purpose. The why of liturgy is to primarily give glory to God and to save souls. The story is important to keep the emphasis on God rather than us. In other words, it can feel at times when we, we, us on the Mass is hard work. But so many times, us on the Mass is difficult. 
We have to do the music, we have to get things right, we have to go and have a building, we have to go and you know, spend time, we have to get energy, we have to carve out time out of our day, out of our week for Mass. It feels like it's us doing it. It's God. This is God's action first. We're being into God's action. We're into God's action. We're into God's own heart. And that's why it transforms and gives us life. That's why it's not that we're so great that we get life. We're being run into God's life, into God's own being, and they're being transformed. We're like clay baked in love to become what we're meant to be. So we approach liturgy with this idea in mind. Because otherwise, we're going to become what we think we own. We're going to think, uh, I can change these things. Uh, I'm a master. I, I like this thing. I like that thing. Why don't we change this or that? People we'll come to the will say, Well, I like so and so's mass better. I like this way better. Now, if all you mean is that it, 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 it follow the rubrics better, look. But if what you mean is your preferences, you're focusing on the moment. But it, what you mean is it's follow God's established method. It's something you know, suffer. It could mean if somebody's not doing God's action, they're doing God's is less good. Then what you mean is my preferences that's good. It's the ordering of the heart. Question. Yes. Are seminaries and most seminaries being taught this currently? I can only give my experience. Um, and so and I would say yes. Um, I, I would say yes. So the, the seminaries, so I was in four seminaries, and all four of them were being taught. Four what? I was in four different seminaries. And when I was there, all four of them, I was at speed bump. Um, but was there a time and a place was not being taught? Yes. Um, I have talked to older priests of past generations who told me that the liturgy class literally, here you have, you can read, you can mass, you know what to do. <laughs> now we're in the class. Um, and then you read, you forget things, you don't understand what's being said in there, you don't know what it means, you know, there's no context to it, or you come across some, some smart person who's a priest who said, you should do it this way instead, you're okay. Um, so yes, I mean, there, there is a particular generation to particular places that don't teach this very well, or at all. Um, that, was, that was changing in my time I can't tell you about right now. I've heard some places are going to go back and go their ways because of certain people to hire. But but that is anecdotal. Like I can't say for certain. Uh, I do know it's something Bishop Waller decides. It's something the Archbishop makes sure certain we know. Um, it's something that. Um, There's plenty of information out there. There's it's plenty of places to find it. Um, hopefully, you will get it. For one thing, this, this is written down in every precinct. If you don't read that, then you're not going to find it. But it's there. The big red book of the maps, you know, that's the beginning of, the beginning of all those things. But, you said, well, it's not the lectionary. This way. This way. Priests. It's the same thing. Um, priests must distinguish it because sometimes it'll be more the priest stuff. But, but even these days, like the um, the little right on the ground, this little, it's all, everything, plus even the readings. 
Um, so, yeah, the, the missile is just the rubric of the mass, the words of the mass, the prayers of the missile. Um, Misa, missile, mass. Well, it is five o'clock. <laughs> we got you two uh, articles. Um, should we try to do one more? Or if we stop here and uh, come back to this week after Thanksgiving? <laughs> 44 to those three weeks. It's a big thing, though. It's for those who are with his participation in that. All right, let's end there then. Yes, we'll close with a prayer. Uh, can I ask you something real quick? Please. I may have written this down incorrectly on the article 43. You said that with the liturgy of maps, it must be done correctly. And what it doesn't say, I probably didn't write that down. That's why, yeah, it doesn't say. Yeah. Uh, well, so remember there's different degrees of incorrect, right? So, so if I remember to come to Mass and bring the wrong color, that's still going to be the Mass. If I'm changing the Mass, it stops being the Mass. That's not, it's no longer going to, to, to give us the grace of the Mass. And it's not going to therefore be solved if it's not going to bring us to heaven. Right? So, so, it, so if it, I change the words of consecration. It's not the Mass anymore. So it's not going to bring us the grace Christ wants to give us the Mass. It's not going to be an act of worshiping God. So it's invalid. Yeah. If it's invalid, it's not worshiping God. If it's invalid, it's not saving, it's not giving us grace. It's actually a sin. It's taking away the grace of God. Right? So that's not the grace of salvation. Right. No. That's not the grace of And, and you have a right, this is, this, is, this is why the church talks about this, you have a right to the liturgy. Because of this. It's, just, it's not simply, you can get, you know, maybe, but you have a right to it because of your baptism, Christ is going to supply this for you. And the, the priest's duty is to give this to his people, to give valid sacraments, to give the to masses, to give the prayer that our Lord glorifies God. And say, your salvation, God is glory. And if I'm not doing this, I am robbing you of something that you didn't deserve. That Christ has given you. I'm stealing it from you for myself. For the growing way. So, so yes, you have a right to this. I mean, not in the fullest sense, because no right was so I'll get it from God. But in terms of, I can't decide tomorrow how to give it to you without doing a serious so I don't know that I know. If I can say, I mean, if you've done something that would make it bad to anticipate, I can tell you I'm not going to absolve you of sin, I'm going to go to the pen first. That's, that's, but you have rights to these things, assuming you're doing your job. So, how do you recognize a valid or invalid mass? So, the bar is very low for invalid mass. So it is going to be, are the words being said, or the stuff being used? The, the bread and wine being offered up, words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood. And if that's being done, it's not the attention of the priest, but usually that's, that's taken away. Um, but those are there to God. You have the right hand a beautiful mass, a, a true mass. So the priest is preaching heresy. Either by act or by words, that is you know, something you probably recognize. Um, what did you say about the words that's going on? Or di is it? Different places it is. Um, I, I don't think it's common here. I don't think it's common um, but, in but for instance, last year in Germany, there was a priest who for funds and decided to say, not decide on bicycle. And so he went his wife on a bicycle, saying mass and then spilling the hosts and making the words. Um, nothing was happening. Or a couple of years ago, there was a priest who went to the beach with his high school kids and got a play the pool float and he was saying mass and changing the words. Because one thing other than the kids, the pool and the beach. 
Is that common? No. Is it happening? Yes. Um, I, I've been to a mass at one of the colleges in New Mexico um, where I was a priest, and the priest was changing the words, and I was not sure it was a mass mm -hmm. uh, because it was changed and much was strange. Um, and not because of that, well, because of my experience, because of things like that, they were later on removed and told we can't be installed because of what was happening in college. Um, so I have seen it happen on occasion. Is, is it common? No. It's everywhere, but does it happen often enough? Too often, yes. When should we seek community? If you suspect it's invalid, no. If you just think that, that it's really dumb and you're doing it stupid, it's go down and ask us. You give the more than the God. But if the priest is breaking out cheese and crackers at this community today, yeah. and rape juice and then, you know, whatever, then you don't see <laughs> But if you if, if try to tell, you know, um, it is a valid mass, even if it's very illicit. The priest is dressed in the colors of local soccer team, <laughs> playing the soccer ball. Is that's what the mass is about. You should tell us to receive as long as he said the right words and is using them. Because it still is that one of us. Well, that would be one of us. Yeah, I think I'm not soccer. <laughs> Come in with my New York Yankees uh, chat. <laughs> Jerry, did you have a question? Yeah, what did you say about heresy? Oh, uh, that, that was an example of, of something which, which wouldn't invalidate the mass per se. A mm -hmm. um, would not, but it might be a reason not to stay. And something you probably would recognize, right? The priest is up there, he gets up with the mass, and you know what? Jesus is really God, we're all God, or something crazy. You know, you might not want to stay there. You might get up and leave. Um, no, I mean, I've been to Mass where the priest was preaching on that Christ is really present in the Eucharist, that uh, know, there's you know, weird things. He wasn't present? Was not present. Uh, but he's in you. That's <laughs> right. And so that's what people come up with, it means the body of Christ. And literally, I've seen this before, one of the, the priests that died told me that he was in a community with somebody and he said, yes, I am the body of Christ. They went, yes, I am. He's kind of talk. It's not bad. No. And it's probably not their fault. It's the problem, not the wrong fault. No problem. Let me do that. Opportunities for catch. That's right. Opportunity for what? Catch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. The 60s. I heard that. Uh, Priest saying gospel of multiplication of bones and fishes and fed the thousands. The real miracle is not the multiplication of and his preaching for the people who share with us as well. That is heresy. That's heresy, yes. Um, but probably not the part where we're invalidating the mass. Um, it's stupid. Um, You're robbing God of his divinity. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's stupid at multiple levels, but it's probably not going to validate the mass. Um, now, if you just, that's all you hear every Sunday or things like that, maybe you find out of church. Uh, if it's one time Father makes a mistake, you roll your eyes or you tell Father after you take water. I want to think about this. So, sometimes, I know this is going to show up, but sometimes priests make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> You're not me. No. Oh, this is a Erase that part, erase that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's in a corner. 
Let's go to the prayers. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for your great goodness. In drawing us to your own life and bringing us to your Son. In establishing the liturgy of the church. Help us enter into the divine liturgy given to us by your Son. We may glorify you here on earth and live with you forever in heaven. We all that we say and do be to your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, where all will die. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.